Hello everyone, I'm Norman Walberger. Today we're going to talk about random variables and the three most important numbers associated to a random variable. The mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. All right, these are fundamental concepts of uh, probability and statistics. So the idea of a random variable is uh, pretty simple in this framework that we've set up. Okay, so what is a random variable? A random variable usually or often denoted say x is just a function on a probability space. And the probability space we usually denote by S and P and I remind you that that means that S is a sample space, that's the set of outcomes that we're looking at to some experiment. And P is some probability measure on that that assigns relative probabilities to the various outcomes. So X is a, a function on that, so we might say that uh, X is actually a function from the sample space to our number system. Well, well my favorite number system is the rational numbers. Those of you uh, indoctrinated into modern analysis will know about the real numbers or think you know about the real numbers. Whether you actually do or not is a different question. But, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's be flexible, all right? And we'll say a re rational valued function or a real valued function. In practice, almost all random variables are rational valued. Because when you go out and make a measurement of something, you, n you never get a real number. You always get a rational number, a decimal uh, number. That's the natural framework for scientific uh, measurements. Okay, there's a certain way I want you to think about this. Okay, a kind of a, a setup. So our, our sample space S, we'll sort of put it here in the, in the plane. This is sort of like the horizontal plane. And we'll think of the, the set of values as sort of being vertical. So here's our axis, the vertical axis, which is uh, usually the y-axis, okay, but uh, in fact we may end up calling it the, uh, the x-axis more than anything else, okay? It might be a little bit strange to think of that axis going up, okay? But uh, what this function is, is, well, you can, you have these various points in here, like maybe uh, S1, S2, and S3, and so on. And this function X is something that assigns to every uh, S a certain value. So here's the value X of S1. And here's the other, another value. There's uh, X of S2. And here's another value. Uh, maybe X of S3, and so on. And these are all numbers, so along here we have some system, one, two, three, also negative values also allowed, rational values is allowed, maybe even real values if you're mystically inclined, okay. So there's our, our number system, there's our number system and the, this function x is taking values in the, in the system, and we're thinking of it as uh, like having a graph, except that we don't have a, a single axis down here like we usually do in calculus. We have a set, often a finite set, yeah, the, the, the sample space s. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what the, uh, the random variable x is. It's just a function on a probability space. And there's all kinds of possible examples. So for example, we might uh, roll a dice, in which case the sample space is the familiar set of possibilities, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one possible random variable. Well, there's all kinds of random variables we could define on this space, but a random variable might be, for example, x, of S might just be S itself, the actual value of the dice. That's a function because these are actual uh, numbers. Another possibility, well, let's say we might say Y of S is the number of letters 
in the English word. For S. Okay, there's a different function from that one. So, for example, here, if we, uh, what would Y of 1 be? You have to write out 1 in English, O N E, that has three letters, so Y of 1 would be 3. That would also be the same as Y of 2, I suppose, also the same as Y of 6. But Y of 4 and Y of 5 would be. 4 and y of 3 would be 5. We could define all kinds of other random variables. Another might be z of s equals 0 or 1. 0 if s is odd, or let's say if s is even, and 1 if s is odd if S is odd. Okay? And there would be many other possible random variables that we could define on this relatively simple probability space. Okay? The crucial thing is that we have to input an S and we have to output a number. That's all the requirement. Okay, so associated to a random variable, and we will look at some other examples uh, later on. Associated to a, such a random variable, x, on a probability space, there are three important numbers. Okay, so to every random variable, x, on a probability space, sp, there are three important numbers that sort of measure or say something about it. And they are called the, the mean. And the mean is usually denoted with the Greek letter mu. And then there is the variance which is usually denoted by the Greek letter sigma squared. And then its square root is called the standard deviation. Uh, sigma, so that's just the square root of whatever the variance is. Okay? So these are all numbers. And although they're associated, although they come from the random variable, and I'll tell you what they are in, in a little while, although they all come from the random variable, they're actually really associated to something else. There's something else floating around in this situation, which is a little bit more abstract. Okay? So these are also associated to a probability distribution. A probability distribution which uh, is co naturally connected to the random variable x that we started with. And in a way, it's this probability distribution that we are mostly interested in in statistics. So before I tell you about mean variance and standard deviation, I should try to explain to you what the probability distribution is. So let's go back to this uh, diagram here. And just in sort of abstract setting, we have some random sample space with a probability measure. And, uh, and we have these different uh, elements of S, and we have these functional values. Now over here on this axis, here's where the actual functional values take place. So what I could do is I could sort of take one of these values and plot it on this, on this axis. So that X of S1, that's just the, its position there, and X of S2 is some number over here, and X of S3 is some number over here, and so on. Of course there will be more than three 
points in the sample space, so there will actually be a whole lot of different values. So there might be a whole bunch of different values here. Okay, and some of them might coincide, like there might be a couple of different values that agree. Right. And what we're really interested in somehow is the, the spread of values along here. Okay, the, the values that this, uh, this function takes on, and something even more important, the probabilities associated with each one of those values. And that's the probability distribution. So the probability distribution associated to a random variable is something that lives on this axis here. But let me try to explain uh, what, what that is. All right, so let's suppose that our random variable x, which is a function from s to all right, the rationals or the reals, takes on values. say x1, x2, up to xk. Those are the values that it takes on. For each one of these values, for each value xi, we can associate a subset of the sample space we can define x inverse of little xi. That's a subset of S. In other words, an event. So the picture again is this. We have our set S down here. We have our vertical axis of numbers. We have our function. And let me draw the function this way. So here's, uh, here are the various S's. And let's say here's a particular value of, a particular value that the function takes on. So that means that there's some, a bunch of S's over here that all get sent to this particular value. Yeah, there might be some other value, xj somewhere else, and there might be a different set of x's that gets sent to xj. Okay, so altogether we have these different values that the function takes on, and uh, okay, they might be x1 up to xk, those x1, x2 up to xk, some set of values, and each one of them is the, the image of at least something in S. Okay, so for any one of these things, we can identify or associate to it its inverse image. So this thing here would be x inverse of little xi. While this set over here would be x inverse of little xj. And these are events in this sample space. And that means that they have probabilities. All right. So to each one of these sets, to each such event, we know it has a probability. So let me remind you that the probability of an event, a general event, is just the sum of all the probabilities, P of S, as S runs through E. So to each such event like here, we know it has a probability. And so let's define, therefore, PI to be the probability of the event x inverse of little xi. So in other words, for this xi here, we would look to see at all the s's that get sent to that. And then we look at that set and say, what's its total probability? We have to add up all the probabilities of all the things in this set. And we say that's the probability of xi happening. 
for xj, we would say that its probability is the sum of all the probabilities here. So each one of these values gets associated with a probability pi. So to each value xi of x, there is a probability pi. And we're going to draw that probability distribution horizontally. So I'm going to take the same axis that, was, that you should think of maybe vertically here, and I'm going to draw it horizontally so it's more like a standard thing. And now the various values, x1, x2, xi, xj, up to xk, wherever they are, are along here. And now I'm going to record all those probabilities with a little diagram. So the probability pi, I'm going to draw a little, so over here is uh, 0, and here is 1. I'm going to draw a little bar, or little tower, that's of height pi, to represent that xi is happening with probability pi. And maybe xj has some different probability, pj. So each one of these things will have some uh, probability associated to it. And this is the probability distribution associated to the random variable x. So this is the probability distribution distribution of x, because we started with the random variable x. This whole collection of values and probabilities. All right, so this is a very, very important concept in, in statistics. Okay, very important concept. We start off with a sample space S and we're measuring something about it. We're measuring one particular aspect via this function x. There might be all kinds of functions, but we're choosing one particular one. And associated to that function, we're asking two questions. We're asking, what values does it take on? The answer is along here. It takes on the values x1, x2, x3, up to xk. <coughs> and the other question we're asking is, what's the probability of each one of those values being taken on? What's the probability that x1 occurs, or the probability that x2 occurs, or the probability that xk occurs? Right, and that's the probability distribution x. And over here, the set s has been lost. You can't see the set s anymore. It's gone. All we have is a bunch of numerical values, x1 through xk, and probabilities associated with them. Oh, it's a very important concept, so let's illustrate it with some examples. Might actually go back to that example there and a few others. Which will make the abstractions hopefully clearer. All right, some examples. All right, so the first example is where s is equal to our set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And our function x was, I'll just write it like this, x of s is s. All right, so now what are the values? This takes on values, well, the values are x1 equals 1, x2 equals 2, all the way up to x6 equals 6. And what are the probabilities? With probabilities, p1 equals 1, 6, p2 equals 1, 6, all the way up to p6 equals 1, 6. These happen to all be equally probable 
outcomes for this function. Okay, that was uh, maybe one. Now let's have a look at the second random variable called y. Okay, so y of s was the number of letters in, uh, in s. What values does this take on? This takes on values, well, I might call them y1, y2, y3, now not x1, x2, x3. So one of the values that it takes on is 3. And the other value it takes on is 4. I'll call that y2. And another value that it takes on is y3, which is 5. And what are the associated probabilities with probabilities? What was the probability of getting a 3? Well, we have to sum up all the probabilities, all the ways of getting a 3, right? We get a 3 because the function takes on the value 3 at, at 1, and also at 2, and also at 6. Each one of these has probability 1 6, so the total of those 3 is 1 half. So that's the probability of getting a 3. What's the probability of getting a 4? Well, we get a 4 by either uh, evaluating at the number 4 or the number 5. They both have 4 letters. So that probability is, well, 2 out of 6, or 1 -third. And there's only one way of getting five letters, that's the number three. And so the probability of getting a three is one six. Okay, over here on the right, I'm going to draw the associated probability distributions. Okay, so over here, I'm just going to record the values that the function takes on. Okay, here's zero. So the values are... A 1, 2, so this is x1, x1 equals 1, 1 equals x1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the probabilities are all 1, 6. So this is a half, and that's a 6. So that would be 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6. That's the probability distribution associated to the function x. What about the probability distribution for y? Well, it takes on what values? Uh, the value 3, which is over here, the value 4, which is over here, the value 5. And what are the various probabilities of those values occurring? 3 takes on the probability a half. 4 occurs with probability one third. And a 3, and no, 4 occurs with probability. Yeah, 4 occurs with probability one third, that's right. And 5 occurs with probability one sixth. All right, so that's the value one half, that's the value one third, and that's the value one sixth. Let's look at another example. Example of a lottery. All right, a few lectures ago we talked about a lottery where there were a bunch of prizes. So a lottery with 10 million tickets, I think. 10 million tickets. They're each one dollar. And the outcomes were, well, let me remind you, there was one grand prize worth uh, one million. There were uh, 10 
Second prize is each worth 100,000. There were 1,000 third prizes. Uh, they were each worth 1,000. Then there were a million consolation prizes, which was a ticket. Well, let's, let's be generous and say that the value of a ticket is one dollar. We'll shortly see that that's not really true, but it actually costs you a dollar to buy it. And, uh, and then there was this other outcome, N, which means that you get zero. Okay, so how should we think about this uh, in a probabilistic set setting? So we could introduce the sample space S. So I think this is what I did last time. The sample space is the set of possible outcomes. G, S, T, C, and N. These are the possible outcomes of you, of you buying a ticket. And the function x that we might be interested in is the value of, of s. So what are the various values? So then x takes on values. Okay, so the first uh, value is the value of uh, getting a g, which is $1 million. Uh, so that's 10 to the 6. The uh, second possible value, if you get an S, that would have a value of 100,000, which is 10 to the 5th. Another, the third possibility is getting a third prize. That would be worth uh, 1,000, which is 10 cubed. Fourth possibility is getting a consolation prize, which is worth only $1. And x to the fifth, the fifth possibility is just getting nothing, which has value zero. And what are the probabilities? Okay, so each one of these is not equally likely. The probability of getting an x1, a prize of a million, is... Well, there's only one of those tickets out of 10 million. So that's 1 in 10 to the 7. That's the probability of getting the value x1. The probability of getting an x2. How many second prizes are there? There's, uh, there's 10 of them. So 10 out of the million. 10 out of the 10 million which is uh, 1 over 10 to the 6. The probability of getting a third prize, well, there's a thousand of those out of 10 million. So that's a thousand over 10 million. So that's 1 over 10 to the fourth. The fourth possibility of getting a consolation prize. How many consolation prizes are there? We said there was one million of them. So there's a one out of ten chance of getting a consolation prize. And what's the probability of getting nothing? Well, out of the ten to the seven tickets, most of them are worth nothing. But not all of them. So we have to subtract the ones uh, that we do have. So we started off with 10 million. We have to subtract a million of these. And then uh, 1,000 of those. And then 10 of those. And then one of those. So it'll be 10 to the 7 minus 10 to the 6 minus 10 cubed minus 10 minus 1 all over 10 to the 7. That'll be the probability of getting nothing. That's about nine, ten nine tenths. Pretty close to being nine tenths. All right, so that's what a probability distribution is. We have values and probabilities.
values and probabilities. That's the probability distribution associated to the, uh, the random variable, in this case, x. Okay, so now I can tell you about the three main numbers are that we associate to such a random variable. The first is the expected value or the mean. And it's usually denoted by E of X or sometimes by the Greek letter mu. And the definition is that E of X is a sum over, over I, of Xi times Pi. So in other words, it's the sum, well, I'll write it out, it's X1 times P1 plus X2 times P2 plus all the way up to Xn times Pn, where N is the number of values. And throughout here, I'm, re I'm using the same idea that x takes on values x1, say, up to xn with probabilities p1 through pn. And the expected value is how much this is worth if it's like a game. Okay. So uh, let's compute some of these. So in our example where s was equal to 1 through 6 and x was just s itself, in that case the expected value is the values are 1 through 6 and each one of them has probability 1, 6. So it's 1 times 1, 6 plus 2 times 1, 6 all the way up to 6 times 1, 6. Which is the same as 1 plus 2 all the way up to 6 times 1, 6. Which is uh, 21 over 6 or 7 over 2. So if we play a game and you roll a dice and whatever number you get, I give you that number of dollars. Okay? Sometimes you get one dollar, sometimes you get five dollars, sometimes you get six dollars. Whatever you roll, I give you a dollar. I give you the, the number on the dice. Okay? Then one sixth of the time you're gonna get one, one sixth of the time you're gonna get two, one sixth of the time you're gonna get six. This is the expected value that you're gonna get. That means over the long run, you can expect to make seven halves or three and a half dollars per throw. Sometimes it'll be less, sometimes it'll be more, but if you play this game a lot of times, then on average, your expected value will be seven over two. So that's telling you how much the game is worth. Right? If I charge you some money to play this game, I'm not gonna let you play it for three dollars. I'm gonna charge you four dollars, say. All right, so you give me $4 and we can play this game. Then I'm going to make how much money? I'm going to make 50 cents every time I play this game, on average. Of course, if you're lucky, I might lose lots of money. You might just roll, be good at rolling fives and sixes, okay? But if you do this with a large number of people, I can expect to make 50 cents a game if I charge you $4 to play this game. Let's have a look at the other uh, the other one, the y function, okay? The y function, remember, takes on values y1 was 3, y2 was 4, y3 was 5, and the probabilities were uh, 1 half, 1 third, and 1 sixth. So what's the expected value of y? The expected value of y is 
Well, in this case, it'll be the sum of the yi's times the pi's. And that's 3 times a half plus 4 times a third plus 5 times 1 6. And do I know what that is? Okay, according to this, it's worth, it's 11 thirds. So there's another game we could play. You roll the dice, and I pay you the number of dollars equal to the number of letters on that dice. The letters on the, on, the, on the English word for the, the number that you get. So sometimes you get $3, sometimes you get $4, sometimes you get $5. On average, this is how much you're going to get. This is the expected value. Which one's bigger? Which game would you rather play? Y is a little bit bigger, right? 11 thirds is a little bit bigger than 7 halves, not by much. So if I was charging you $4 a game, I would make a little bit less money on this game than I would on the previous game. Okay, the real object of interest is this one here. This is real life. Okay. What's the expected value of this lottery? Okay. What's the expected value of the lottery? It's not hard to compute because we have the values right here. These are the values and here are the probabilities. So to calculate the value of the expected value of, the prob of this uh, lottery, we just apply the same formula. So the expected value of x is... So it's values times probabilities. Value of 10 to the 6 times the probability of 1 over 10 to the 7. Then we have to add the second value, which is, X, which is 10 to the 5th, times its probability, which is 1 over 10 to the 6, plus 10 cubed times its probability, which is 1 over 10 to the 4th, and I'll keep going over here. Plus the fourth one is the value of 1 times the probability of 1 tenth. And the last one, the outcome is, is 0 times the probability, well, I don't really care what it is because it's going to get multiplied by 0, but let's say roughly 9 tenths. I don't even have to compute what that is. And what does that all amount to? That's two-fifths. And that's actually quite close to real life. That's actually probably a little bit more generous than in real life, but pretty close. So what we're saying is that this, this game is worth 40 cents. Two-fifths two two of a dollar is 40 cents. This is worth 40 cents. So you pay a dollar to buy a ticket. Mathematically, your expected value is 40 cents. So in other words, if you decide to buy lots and lots of tickets, you decide to buy thousands and thousands of tickets, you should expect, over the long run, that for every dollar you, you put in, you can get 40 cents back. Which, of course, is why lotteries are very much beloved by governments. <laughs> you can see why. Right? It's like me saying, let's all play a game, guys. You all give me $10. I'll take that money. I'll pocket 60%. And then I'll take the rest of the 40% that's left and hand it out as prizes. Some of you will get, get good prizes and you'll be very happy. And the rest of you will go, geez, that, that, I was unlucky. I, I'm going to do better next time. <laughs> So, yes, internationally, this is roughly on par for a lottery, 40 cents. But I might men mention 
that sometimes it's not that. So sometimes the expected values go up. Sometimes there are these cumulative lotteries, you know, where nobody has won for months and months and months, and the pot gets getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there are people sitting here, they're making calculations exactly like this, saying, wait a minute, the expected value is now $1.20. That means every ticket's actually worth a dollar twenty. And then there are these syndicates, this happens in Europe and so on. There are these syndicates that say, all right, time to buy up all the tickets. So they go, they get lots of million dollars, they buy up all the tickets. And mathematically know that they know every one dollar ticket they're buying is really worth a dollar twenty. So that's a pretty good deal. Of course, that doesn't mean that some little old lady not in the syndicate is not going to win the big grand prize, but All right, so that's expected value. What about the other two? Well, there's really only one other, main other uh, concept. That's the variance. Maybe I'll, I'll say one uh, more thing about expected value. There's another way of thinking about it, expected value. So let's say we uh, go back to our probability distribution. And we, we think about having probabilities. Another way of thinking about where the expected value or the mean is, is it's that place where the probability distribution balances. So if you imagine these as being weights, on the actual number line. Imagine the number line being, say, weightless, but you just have these weights in different positions. Then there will be one place where the weights balance. If you know your formula for center of mass in physics, it's the same kind of formula as, as, as occurring here. So the center of mass is, and the mean are really the same. That's the expected value. Now the other main concept, the concept of variance, variance tells us how far from the center of mass these weights are distributed. Okay, so variance, usually denoted VAR of x, or sometimes by sigma squared, measures how far how spread out from mu, which is the expected value, the values are. And the formula is the variance of x is summation over, uh, over the various i's of xi minus mu, all squared, times the probability pi. So what we're doing here is, here's the value mu. We're looking at each of these differences. Okay, we're taking this difference, this difference, all the differences, and squaring them. We're squaring them because that's mathematically a nicer thing to work with. It's just like rational trigonometry. Okay. In fact, there's a close uh, parallel between variance and, and quadrants in rational trigonometry. And that means that things on the left and things on the right are going to be contributing equally. We're not going to take direction into account. But it also has the effect that points which are far away are going to be weighing this quantity heavily. Because when you square a big number, you get a much bigger number. And each one of these is sort of weighted by the probability. All right, so let's make a computation uh, for our examples. Let's say uh, for the, uh, the, the y for the y on, uh, on 1 through 6. So we had values 
uh, y1 equals 3, y2 equals 4, y3 equals 5. The probabilities were a half, one third, and one sixth. We already calculated that the expected value was equal to 11 thirds. All right, that you have to calculate that first. All right, now what we have to do to calculate the variance, what we have to do is that we have to form the sum. We have to take differences between the mean and the various values and weight them according to the probabilities. All right, so the first one will be the difference between 11 thirds and 3. So 3 is like 9 thirds, that's 2 thirds. So we have to take 2 thirds and we have to square it and multiply by one half. The next one, the four, we have to take the difference. Uh, four is 12 thirds, so that's a difference of one third. We square it and multiply by one third. And then the last one, the five, the difference between five and the mean 5 is 15 thirds, so that's uh, 4 thirds. Take 4 thirds squared and multiply by 1 sixth. So this is 4 ninths times a half, that's 2 ninths. And here we have uh, 1 27th. And here we have uh, 16 over 6, that's 8 over 3. So it's 8 27ths. And how many 27ths is that all together? 6 plus 1 plus 8 is 15 over 27. And divide by 3, I suppose that's 5 ninths. Okay, if I've done the arithmetic right. There's an alternate formula for the variance, which is, in fact, a little bit more widely used. Because as you can see, this formula usually involves some fractional arithmetic because the mean is usually a, a fraction. So there's another formula, which we'll write as a theorem, that says that the variance of x is also equal to the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. And what, what do I mean by that? So the expected value of x squared means the sum of the xi squareds times the pi's. It's like treating x squared as a new random variable. And the mu is just the expected value that we've done before. Let's prove this. All right, so the variance of x uh, from our formula, it's the sum of the xi minus mu squared times the pi. And we're just going to do a little bit of summation with, uh, with these indices, this sort of summation sign. So if I expand this out, I get summation of xi squared minus 2xi mu plus mu squared. All of that times pi, and we're summing over the, the i's. Okay, when you have a sum like this, you can break it up. Right? So the first one is really the sum over the i of the xi squared times the pi. That's good, that's the, what we want over there. And then we have minus 2, the, the 2 can come out front, xi times mu times pi, and then the sum of the mu squared times the pi. Okay, so how can we simplify this? Well, remember that mu, which is the expected value, is a number. That's a number just like 2 is. So we can actually bring that outside the summation. And this mu squared is also a number. That can be brought out into the uh, front as well. 
So if we do that, we get sum of xi squared times pi minus 2 mu times the sum xi pi plus mu squared times the sum of the pi's. What is that? That's the sum of xi squared times pi. What is the sum of the xi's times pi's? That's mu itself. That's the definition of mu. So we're actually getting minus 2 mu squared for this term here. And what is the sum of the pi's? Well, these are probabilities. They have to add up to 1. So the total here is plus mu squared. And conveniently, the minus 2 mu squared and the plus mu squared uh, give us summation xi squared pi minus mu squared for the, the grand total. And finally, the standard deviation. That's sometimes called SD of X. That's just the square root of the variance. And it's usually denoted sigma. So it has the same relation to the variance as length does to quadrants. It's a more linear notion while the variance is a quadratic notion. But in statistics, most of the time, theoretical developments work with the variance instead, not the linear thing. So the variance will be crucial. Most of the time when we have a random variable, we'll ask the two questions, what's the mean and what's the variance? So next time we'll have a look at some interesting probability distributions that occur in different situations. See you then.